Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we will be creating some farmhouse style decor using items from the Dollar Tree and items that are less than a dollar. Now these pieces are perfect for home decor in any space in your home and can be stained or painted in the color of your choice. Now these are all super easy to make and can be interchangeable throughout the year. As always, all of the projects I create have the complete supply list in the description box so you can easily use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now before we start, I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers and if you're a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy these crafts and the different methods that I will share throughout the creative process. So now, let's just jump right into the projects. Now this project is a wood sign with a wreath display. We'll need a two packs of the five gallon paint stir stick from Lowe's for 98 cents one MDF word sign from the Dollar Tree. We'll also need one eight inch wreath form and they are two for a dollar from the Dollar Tree and a bundle of greenery from Walmart. Okay, we're gonna start with those paint stir sticks. Go ahead and remove those from the packaging. Now once they're removed, we are going to grab a grid mat just to help with alignment. And I wanna lay out the paint stir sticks with the numbers facing you, and then rotate the paddle of each one of those paint stir sticks as you lay them out. Now here is what they should look like when they're all laid out, and you can go ahead and use that grid mat to make sure they are nice and even on the ends and the top and bottom. Now to join these together, I'm using pieces of some one gallon paint stir sticks I had left over, but you can certainly use craft sticks for this step as well. Now to bond these together, I am gonna use my Sherbonder wood stick hot glue, but you could use some wood glue as well. And I'm going to add a generous amount on the back of those sticks and then press it firmly into place. What I'm gonna do is I am gonna bond one on each end, and then I'm gonna go back and bond that center one in place. Now as you bond these on those sticks, you wanna kinda of press all of the sticks together to make sure there are no gaps between them. Now that they're all bonded, you wanna flip it over and everything looks nice and smooth. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and flip it over to the good side and I'm gonna paint this with some black acrylic paint. Now you can choose any color or stain that you like. Now I'm gonna uh, paint on one nice coat of this black acrylic paint all over the surface and the sides of my paint sticks. And then I'm gonna go in with a finer tipped paintbrush and get in the gaps where all the little handles are of all the paint sticks. Now once that's done, you wanna let it sit to completely dry. Now while that's drying, go ahead and grab your sign of your choice. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove that jute string handle or hang string because I won't be using it in my project. Now I am gonna be painting this with some white acrylic paint. And how I like to paint this is I like to start by painting the outside of the letters first and also the inside of all the loops in the letters. Now once the outsides and insides are all nice and painted, then I will go in and apply two nice coats of that acrylic paint on the surface of all of the letters. And here is my word, all nice and painted, and just let this completely dry. Okay, now that our paint sticks are nice and dry, I'm gonna go in with some sandpaper, and I wanna give it some light distressing. I just wanna show just little bits and pieces of that wood shining through that black surface. I just love the look of this. It really makes it look rustic and aged, and I'm just gonna go around all of those edges, and this is the final result of my sanding. So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over to the back and I'm going to add a jute string with two knots tied on each end. And this will be used to hang my project up. So I just wanna add a couple of staples on each end just to secure that knot into place. And you can see this provides a nice taut hang string for the back. Okay, so go ahead and sit that to the side. And the next item we're gonna work on is our wreath. Now I'm taking one of those eight inch wreath forms that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And I have this bundle of uh, eucalyptus I got from Walmart. Now all I did was actually cut all the branches off of this and intertwine it around that eight inch wreath. And then I went and secured it with some 
fishing line to wrap it around it because I didn't want to use hot glue. Now I have a tutorial and I'll link it in the upper right hand corner of this video and also in the description box showing you step by step how I accomplish this. Okay, and through the magic of video, this is what the wreath looks like. It's nice and secure and I love how it turned out and it's the perfect size for this project. So we are going to be centering this on the wood planks and I do not want to hot glue this. I want it to be interchangeable. So I'm going to use one of these little plant hooks I had hanging out. You can get this from any hardware store or even Walmart and I think they come in about an eight pack for a dollar. So what I'm gonna do is measure the center of the sticks. On that second stick, we're gonna mark the very center at the top of it. And then we are gonna take our plant hook and we're just gonna screw that right in. It should go right into the wood without any pre-drilling necessary. And now we can hook our wreath right on. So by this time, our word should be nice and dry. So we're gonna go ahead and flip that over. And again, we are gonna grab our fishing line. Now I like to use the fishing line for this so it won't be seen in the project. And I didn't want that jute twine hanging out there and showing through my project. So the fishing line will work perfect for this. So I'm gonna take the end and I'm gonna tie about three knots in the end. And then I'm gonna take that three knot um, tied in and I'm gonna apply it to the top of the F and family and put two staples there. Now to determine how long the string needs to be, I am gonna move the sign right back over and sit my family sign right on top. Determine the length by hooking it on the hook and then just kind of get an estimate of where I want the end to be and go ahead and tie three knots at that location on your fishing line as well. And now we can secure that three knot bundle to the other letter on the back of family and trim off all of those loose ends. So now we have this slightly invisible looking string to hang it on and we can apply that to our sign just by um, nestling it right on top of the wreath on that little hook. And now we have this fitting right in place, right in the center of our sign, ready to display. And here is our sign, nice and hung up on display and it looks awesome. Now I love the versatility of this sign, which can not only be displayed year round, but can also be switched out for other words, different wreaths or decor of your choosing. Now you can finish these pieces in any color. You can stain or paint whatever color that you love in order to fit into your space. Let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. Now this project is a two piece farmhouse crate decor. Now we're gonna need two wood crates from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna need eight of these little metal feet that I got from Amazon. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is to take our little metal feet and I am going to be spray painting them with this Krylon flat black spray paint. And I'll also have give a link to these feet in the description box below if you are interested in those. Now while those are drying, go ahead and grab your wood crates and remove all of the labels from the bottom. And we're gonna paint these with a coat of white chalk paint. Now I like to start painting my crates by painting the inside first. So I'm putting a little paint in there and I'm spreading it around a nice and even. Now once the inside is done, go ahead and do the outsides, making sure you get those crevices really well. Now repeat this for your second one and let them completely dry. Now that our crates are dry, we can give them some light distressing. Now I'm going to take my black acrylic paint and what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna grab a craft stick and I'm gonna just press the flat end of the craft stick into the paint and then just scrape it along all of the edges. I think that this gives the perfect amount of distressing to the edges. It's not too much, not too little, and you have better control of it this way. And then we're gonna add some little distressing with the side of the craft stick along the creases of the crate to kind of highlight those as well. Now, once the first one is done, we're gonna repeat this for your second crate. And here are both crates all painted. And now just allow them to completely dry. Okay, so now our crates have sat for a while and they are nice and dry. 
Now I printed out these labels to go on my crates. Now I created these myself and I do have a printable. I'll link it down in the description box below if you're interested in printing these out and adding them to your crates. Now I printed these on a cardstock, but you can actually print these on label paper as well. Now to attach these to the crates, I am gonna use my glue stick. I'm just putting a generous amount on them and then pressing them on the side of each crate, just making sure they are nice and centered. Now you can certainly use hot glue or Mod Podge if you like, but um, it's all up to you. And I found that the glue stick works perfect for this project. Now, once that's done, my feet are nice and dry from the Krylon spray paint. So I'm gonna add one into each corner. Now these did come with these tiny little screws, but since this is a lightweight project, the wood hot glue will work perfect for adhering these into each one of the corners of the box. Okay, so now all four legs are attached to my box and I think it looks so adorable. We're just gonna repeat this for the second one and now we can decorate these. And how easy was that? Now here are our crates filled with greenery and placed on display. Now I love this rustic antique look of these and they are also so fun to customize. Now you could add pumpkins for fall, eggs for Easter. I mean, there are endless possibilities with these little crates. My favorite accent has to be these little feet and these are linked below and they're around 50 cents each. Now you all have to let me know what kind of goodies would you fill these crates with? Let me know in the comments below. Now this project is a mason jar wall sconce decor. We're gonna need two of these wood planks from the Dollar Tree and two of these mason style jars you can get from the Dollar Tree or Walmart. Okay, we're gonna start off with those mason jars, remove those lids. You wanna make sure your jars are nice and clean and then take them out to give them two coats of this flat black spray paint by Krylon. Now, while those are drying, we are gonna work on our planks. Now, I wanted to paint my planks and I am gonna be using some white chalk paint for this. Now, I'm only gonna be using one nice coat since this is nice and thick and I do wanna paint the top and the sides of each one of those wood planks. and you wanna allow those to completely dry. So here they are, nice and dry, and I am gonna use a, my black acrylic paint to give it the same type of distressing I did with my crates. Again, taking my little craft stick hack, I wanna dip it into the paint on the flat side and then drag it along the edges. I just absolutely love this technique. It turns out perfect every time. I mean, you really can't mess this up. Now, once you go around all of those edges, this is what it looks like. Go ahead and repeat it for your second plank. And here they are. Now with the leftover paint on that craft stick, I'm lightly dragging it on the surface of the plank to pick up some of those ridges in the natural texture. And it also gives a nice rustic display on the top of the plank as well. Now, once that's done, you wanna let those completely dry. Now here they are, nice and dry. Now I'm gonna add these hooks. Now I got these hooks from Amazon. I'll link these in the description box below, but you can also use these utility hooks from Dollar Tree or even the peel and stick version from the Dollar Tree as well to accommodate this project. Okay, these do have little drill holes in them and I'm gonna be using some three quarter inch wood screws that are number six for this project. They came with little screws, but I happen to misplace them, but the three quarter inch screws that are number six will fit perfectly for this project. So we wanna go ahead and, and center our hooks about an inch and a half from the top. And I'm only adding a little hot glue to the back just to keep them standing upright while I secure them in place with the screws. Now, please note that hot glue will not hold these very well you definitely want to screw these in. So these are easy just to hand screw in. The wood is very soft and these screws are nice and sharp. So you only need a screwdriver to get these into place. And here is one with the screws in place. And just repeat this for your second one. Now that the screws are in, we are going to blend those in. And I'm just going to dab some black acrylic paint on the top of each one of those exposed screw heads to blend it in. 
and then allow those to completely dry. Now, once they dry, go ahead and flip those over and we are again, we are gonna add these D-ring style hanging hooks on the back. Now, you could definitely use the jute twine and staples with this, but I wanted to use these D-rings since I had them on hand and I'll have a link to those in the description box below if you are interested in those as well. So again, I'm using the hot glue to secure them in place until I can get that one screw in there and these again can be hand screwed in without a problem. So now the rings are hooked to both of the signs and they're good to go. So now that those are done, we are gonna work on our mason jars and I love how this flat black spray paint turned out on these, it turned out perfect. So I'm gonna grab a piece of ribbon, it's about 32 inches long and what I wanna do is I wanna tie one single knot on the end. You wanna make sure that this is nice and tight and then trim off the excess. Now to make a hanger out of this ribbon, I'm first going to wrap the ribbon around with the tail part at the end. You wanna cross it around and then you wanna wrap it around the back. Now once it reaches the back again, you wanna twist that ribbon around itself and then bring it back to the front. Now once it's at the front, what you wanna do is loosen up the two rounds that you made around the front of the jar and you wanna feed that, that one loop around twice. You wanna pull it really tight and snug and then pull it straight up to make a handle and it should lock itself into place till it makes a nice little hanging handle as shown here. And now all you have to do is repeat this for your second one. Now here are our two mason jars. We just hook those babies on and now we can decorate with them. And oh my goodness, okay, I absolutely love how these turned out. Now I added some greenery from the Dollar Tree, but these will look great with some flowers too. Now, now these little hooks are perfect for this project and the black mason jars, they really turned out awesome. Now I can't wait to use these wood planks and stain them for different projects for my space. Now this project is a farm fresh sign with a shelf. Now we're gonna need one of these signs from the Dollar Tree and also one of these floating shelves from the Dollar Tree. Okay, we're gonna start out with the sign and we're gonna remove that jute twine from the top. Now, if you have some spackle, you could spackle those holes, but I love to use this, use this little hack with my hot glue. I put some hot glue through the back until it bubbles on top of the front as shown here. I like to allow it to completely dry. And then what I do is I go in with my utility knife and I lay the blade flat against the board and then just kind of sever the top of that hot glue bubble off. And it cuts really smooth with the surface of the wood piece. And then to add a little extra smoothness, I go over lightly with a piece of sandpaper and now all of our holes are nice and patched. So now that that's done, we are ready to prepare our piece for painting. And I am going to paint this in a coat of white chalk paint. You could just use one to two coats as needed for your project. Now once you get your layers on, you want to allow them to completely dry. Okay, so here's my piece all nice and dry. Now the next thing I wanna do is to take a Sharpie or you can take a paint pen and I wanna go around the outside edge as shown here about a quarter of an inch away from the edge just to provide a nice accent with a black uh, tipped marker or paint pen. And this is what the final result will look like. Okay, so now we can add our shelf. Now you can add it horizontally or vertically. Now I decided to go vertically and what I did is unpackage that shelf and I hot glued it at the bottom of the shelf. I have don't know what happened to that footage, but that's what I did. I hot glued it in place, but then I am gonna follow up with some wood screws to make sure it is absolutely super secure. Now I'm using a 3 30 second inch drill bit to drill two holes through the back of the shelf so that the drill bit goes inside the shelf you won't see it and then I'm using some six and three quarter inch wood screws to put in those holes now you can use the wood screws that come with the shelf now they are a little larger but they will work for this project since the screws will go into the shelf and they won't be seen on the other side 
Okay, so once that shelf is in place, I wanted to put some wording on my sign. I decided to put on the front Farm Fresh. So I'm going to start by just gathering up all my letters. Now I'm not securing them into place right now. I'm just kind of putting them on the sign just to make sure I have enough to spell out my word. And then I'm going to go back and make sure they're nice and even and pressed into place and then add fresh right below it. Okay, now that our words are on there, we are going to be covering the back of the project. Now, I love to use this brown craft paper that I get from the construction section at Lowe's. It's, it's a little bit thicker than normal craft paper, and I love it to cover the back of my projects. Just add hot glue to the back of your sign, and then press it right on top of that craft paper. And then when that's nice and bonded, you can go in with an X-Acto knife or your utility knife and trim carefully along the edges of your sign, trimming off all of that excess. Now once you take that paper off, you can go ahead and clean up any edges you might have missed. And now the back of your sign looks nice, clean, and professional. Okay, so now all we have to do is to add our hangers. And again, I am using my D-rings here to uh, hang my sign up. And I'm going to add one on each side. Now I am going to secure the hardware in place with hot glue first before I add the screws. Now these D-rings do come with the screws in the package. So you don't have to worry about buying a separate item to secure them. Now once they're hot glued, add those tiny little screws into the hole. And you could just use this with a screwdriver. No drilling required. Okay, so the top of my sign looked a little bare, so I decided to add a little accent. So I grabbed my poster letters again, and I grabbed a question mark. So what I did is I first put the dot of the question mark in the center of the sign, and then I put one side of a question mark on one side and the other side on the other side of the dot, and it formed a little decorative swirl. I was really surprised at that. So it's just amazing what you can figure out from poster letters, but it turned out perfect for this project and it filled in that gap. And so now our sign is nice and ready and we can go ahead and decorate and hang it up for display. So now that our sign is now all hung up, you can add any trinkets or greenery that you like to your shelf. Now I think this is super cute and it's such a great way to display those small decor pieces you may have on hand. Now you guys, I loved creating all of these projects today and it's always so hard for me to pick a favorite. So let me know in the comments, which one of these DIYs today was your favorite? listen if you love DIYs on a budget please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends make sure that you're following she so crafty ee -E on Facebook Instagram and Pinterest for the latest news sneak peeks and giveaways now if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my she so crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.